Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was forwarded to me by one of our uh, dear sister. But first, there is a message that um, we received. It was also forwarded from one of our dear listeners. The message that was sent, uh, it reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi. I've been listening to the story of the woman who was instructed to jump over the grave. You may give her this address. The address is number 28 Gwigui Murwebi Street, Newtown, Johannesburg, South Africa. Deliverance will be conducted. Uh, the kind of satanic manipulations that were played on her by her uncle will cause her efforts to reach the top in life to amount to nothing. What she needs is deliverance. She must not delay. The name of the place is called Rock of Victory Ministries International. This coming Monday, the 19th, 19th of August, uh, we will be embarking on a program entitled War Against Satanic Manipulations. She is more than welcome. Lack of knowledge has caused people to perish. Please, if you can manage to forward this message to her, do it, my brother. A case is a very sensitive one. Hashtag Christ is the solution. So uh, that is a message that we received that was sent to us by one of our dear listeners. So let me read for you um, uh, this other story that was sent to me by our dear sister, which comes from a translation. The translation reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My name is Sarah, not your real name. And I am a woman who has experienced both the death of despair and the heights of miraculous healing. So I have been married to my husband, whom I will call David, for over 10 years now. And for most of that time, we longed for a child. But the joy of motherhood was something that always eluded me and the pain of not being able to conceive. It was always the weighing on my heart, always reminding me of how I had felt as a woman. For years, I suffered in silence. At least when we were still staying alone, there was always hope because I would think that I would be pregnant, then I would have a miscarriage. But after my husband's parent passed away, and then we came and we started staying at their house, their neighbor, I used to have a lot of dreams about her and when i would pray for her in my dreams then in real life she started hating me and when i started staying where we are staying right now with my husband that was when i started to suffer for years i could not even tell my husband i was suffering in silence my body tormented by fibroids that made pregnancy impossible the pain it was unbearable at times both physically and emotionally Every month brought the same bitter disappointment, the same tears and the same questions from those around us, especially from my husband's family. They will be like, why don't you have a child? Yet they would, ask, they would be asking, not knowing that whenever they would ask me, their words, they caused so much agony in my heart. But the worst past was not the pain or the endless doctor visits. It was the knowledge that my condition was not just a matter of biology. Deep down, I knew something darker was at play. I could feel her presence, our neighbor's presence in my life. At night, I would have dreams about her. She would be holding a crate of eggs and she would laugh at me as she would be inserting those eggs into my private parts and she would say that I am going to watch these eggs as they will be growing in your womb. It was not until much later that I learned the truth, the truth that shook me to my core. My neighbor, a woman whom had forced to become a friend of mine, whom I thought that I could trust, considered a friend, had been behind it all. It's hard to believe even now, but she had bewitched me out of jealousy because she wanted her own daughter to get married to my husband. And she had used dark magic to curse me with those fibroids, ensuring that I will never carry a child of my own. For years, I lived under the curse and aware of the evil 
that had been done to me. I tried everything to conceive. I used to push some pills, some of them that we would order from China that were going to clean my womb to remove the fibroids, medication, treatments, prayers, but nothing was working. I began to lose hope, believing that motherhood was not meant for me. The darkness that surrounded me grew heavier and heavier with each and every passing year. And I felt more isolated and I felt more defeated. Then one day something changed. My husband and I, we then attended a revival service at a local church led by a pastor, but not from our country, known for his powerful prayers and healing ministry. I was skeptical, having tried so many things before, but he insisted that we needed to go. I remember sitting there. My heart was heavy with doubt as the pastor spoke about God's power to break all curses to heal the sick and to restore what had been lost. When it was my turn, the pastor laid his hands on me and he prayed. It was a prayer unlike any prayer that I had ever had, and it was filled with faith. As he prayed, I felt a warmthness that was spreading through my body, a lightness that I had not felt in a couple of years. I don't know what was happening. Then I fell down, then I started to manifest. In the weeks that followed, the pain was all gone, and then the impossible happened. I found out that I was pregnant after 10 long years. The curse had been broken and I was going to have a child. It was a miracle, a blessing that I could hardly believe. My joy, however, became filled with sorrow as I was happy in the miracle of new life that was growing inside of me. I noticed something that was happening to my neighbor's daughters. One by one, they began to suffer from the same condition that had been plaguing me for so long. The fibroids that had once tormented me were now afflicting them. They were too struggling with the pain and heartbreak that I had known so well. It did not take long for me to realize what had happened. The curse that had been placed on me it had returned back to its sender, returning to its source and affecting those that were closest to her. The knowledge of this filled me with a deep sense of unease. It had been, I had been delivered, but they were now suffering. Innocent girls who were now suffering because of their mother's actions. I don't know what to do with this that I have learned. I have been blessed with the child I longed for. I can't help but feel guilty knowing that my neighbor's daughters are the ones that are paying for their mother's sins and she is unrepentful. She does not want to repent and she does not allow her children to come to church. I never wanted this. I never wanted anyone to suffer. This is my confession. I was bewitched by my own neighbor, but through the grace of God, I was healed and I was given the child that I always prayed for. I am grateful from the, for the miracle. My heart is filled with pain when Ever, I ask her to let me to go with her daughters because they have since been kicked out by their husbands for no reason at all, but she has since refused. She says that no child of mine will ever go to church because church is for people who do not think. I don't know what the future holds for them, and I pray, I always pray for my neighbor to release her own daughters because of the way that they are suffering. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear admin, one of our admins who gave us this translation. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world.